Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, we are diving into a controversial topic that's been making headlines, the tax rates on pensioners. More specifically, the claim that these tax policies are somehow a punishment for voting Brexit. But Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party, has strongly denied this, saying that any tax increases or changes affecting pensioners are not political payback. So let's break it down. First off, where does this idea even come from? Well, some have been arguing that pensioners who were a key demographic in the Brexit vote are now being unfairly targeted by certain tax measures. Pensioners are traditionally seen as a conservative voting bloc and many were in favor of leaving the EU. With Brexit, let's say partly done and with a lot of political changes on the horizon, the idea has surfaced that the government might be using fiscal policies like tax increases or cuts to benefits as a form of retribution against pensioners, especially those who voted to leave. But Starmer has come out swinging against these accusations, saying they are not only untrue, but damaging to the political discourse. He insists that any adjustments to tax policy have nothing to do with Brexit or voter punishment. Instead, he claims they are part of a broader strategy to manage the country's finances and, and deal with ongoing economic challenges. So, what, what are these tax rates we are talking about? Well, the term tax rate has been thrown around quite a bit, especially in relation to the proposed freezing of the pension lifetime allowance, changes to inheritance tax thresholds, and the tightening of rules on capital gains tax. Some see these measures as disproportionately affecting older, wealthier individuals, many of whom are pensioners. The criticism is that this looks like a targeted squeeze on people who've spent their life saving for retirement, investing in property or accumulating wealth through pensions. It's easy to see why people might interpret these measures as politically motivated. Pensioners, particularly those in yeah, more affluent regions, were strong supporters of Brexit. So, when the government starts tinkering with the tax system in ways that hit this group, accusations of retribution start flying. It fits neatly into a narrative that suggests the government, now led by a Labour leader, is trying to make Brexit voters pay for the choices they made in 2016. But Starmer is quick to dismiss this, calling the idea even absurd. He argues that these tax measures are about fairness and sustainability, not punishing specific voters. And according to him, the economic situation demands tough choices and the tax changes are part of a broader effort to ensure the country's financial stability. But now let's take a closer look at some of the specific policies that are yeah, kind of fueling this controversy. First up is the pension lifetime allowance. This is the limit on how much people can accumulate in their pension pots without facing extra tax charges. Freezing this allowance means that over time, more people will be caught by the threshold and face higher tax bills on their pensions. This has raised concerns among older people, especially those who've been saving diligently for retirement, that they are being unfairly targeted. Critics argue that this will disincentivize saving and punish those who've been responsible with their money. But the government's counter-argument is that the pension lifetime allowance primarily affects wealthier individuals, those with large pension pots, and that it's only fair to ask this group to contribute more during tough economic times. Starmer has echoed this sentiment, framing it as a way to address inequality and, and ensure that those with the broadest shoulders bear the heaviest burden. Then there's the issue of inheritance tax. This one always stirs up debate because it hits people who are trying to pass on wealth to their families. Recently, there's been talk about freezing inheritance tax thresholds, meaning that as property prices rise, more estates will be dragged into paying the tax. 
Again, this is something that disproportionately affects wealthier individuals, many of whom are older and own significant assets. This too has been interpreted as a targeted attack on pensioners, many of whom own property and are planning to pass it on to their children. But again, Starmer and his team insist this is about fairness, not politics. They argue that inheritance tax is one of the few ways to address intergenerational inequality by ensuring that wealth isn't simply passed down untouched from one generation to the next. And then there's capital gains tax. For those who aren't familiar, capital gains tax is what you pay when you sell an asset like property or investments for profit. There's been talk about increasing this tax or reducing the exemptions, which again would affect those who've built up wealth over time, including pensioners with second homes or investments. And critics argue that this would be another hit on pensioners, especially those who relied on property as a form of investment or as part of their retirement plans. But supporters of the policy say it's about closing loopholes and ensuring that everyone, regardless of age, pays their fair share. So we've got a lot of policies on the table that are being viewed by some as punitive measures aimed at, at, at pensioners, especially those who voted for Brexit. But let's be clear. Starmer has categorically denied this. He insists that these changes are about economic necessity and addressing inequality, not punishing a particular voting bloc. He argues that the country is facing serious financial challenges, which is true, by the way, and everyone needs to contribute to get things back on track. But here's the tricky part. Whether or not the policies are explicitly aimed at Brexit voters, there is no denying that these tax changes do hit many people who fall into that demographic. Pensioners, especially those who've done well for themselves, are going to feel the pinch. And whether or not this is a deliberate political move, the optics are hard to ignore. People will inevitably see this as a case of political retribution, whether it's true or not. And of course, it's also worth considering the broader economic context. Britain, like many other countries, is grappling with significant economic challenges post-COVID, post-Brexit, and in the midst of global economic instability. The government is under pressure to find new sources of revenue and to address a widening wealth gap. In that context, it's not surprising that wealthier pensioners who have enjoyed tax breaks and generous pension allowances for years, are now being asked to contribute more. Starmer's Labour Party is positioning itself as the party of fiscal responsibility and fairness, very different to our Social Democrats here, by the way, and that means making tough decisions about who pays what in taxes. But the question is, are these policies fair or are they unfairly targeting one group of voters? Is this really about economic necessity or is there a political undercurrent at play? For many pensioners, particularly those who voted for Brexit, it might feel like they are being singled out. After all, they voted to leave the EU in the hope of taking back control and for many to protect their financial futures. But now they find themselves facing higher taxes and reduced benefits, which seem to go against the promises made during the Brexit campaign. At the end of the day, this debate is far from over. Starmer, Starmer can deny any political moves behind these tax measures, but for many people, perception is reality. And whether it's true or not, a lot of pensioners feel like they are being punished for their political choices. And as we head into future elections, you can bet that this issue will continue to be a major point of contention. So what do you think? Are pensioners being unfairly targeted or are these tax policies simply a necessary step to ensure economic fairness? Is Starmer right to insist that this has nothing to do with Brexit or is there a deeper political motive at play? 
Well, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this video interesting, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, of course, and uh, hit the bell so you don't miss any of our future videos on politics, society, and everything in between. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. You know that the next one is right here in the end screen.